Oh, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome back to a new, um, a new relocated Good Word Show. We, we done moved. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in church. No, no, but um, you can, you are kind of like in a space that is um, church-ish. It is churchy. <laughs> very churchy in here so yeah um I was thinking about it more so never mind I'm not even gonna say (laughs) whatever it was I'm not even gonna say I wasn't talking about the windows I was I was it was a um just leave it anyway let me just be quiet so (laughs) probably for the best (laughs) it is probably for the entire best so we are uh back in the office today today (laughs) <laughs> yes, we are back in the office as um, as many of the, you who are listening probably have done. Our, we have a return to office. Um, and uh, so this is our first official week as a return. To, our office never closed. So let's just let's just Start officially there. there. It, it never really shut down. Um, we could come, but many people um, decided to work from home, as did we. So you have been enjoying the um, scenery of our collective homes for the, the last uh, two, two years. years. <laughs> I was getting ready to say a few months, but I was like, nope. When you um, say it like that, when you say two years, you realize it's been two years. It's been two years. Yes. I don't remember if we ever recorded a show when we were both in the office. I feel like I have been here no. a couple of times. Oh, no, we were. Times. There was one, There's one, because that's when I had to try to find a spot so yeah, oh, yeah that was, it, it was it was like couple, but that was recent though but i mean yeah, yeah it was like a couple weeks pre-pandemic well we pre-pandemic we were in the studio that is true yeah but there was one like right at the start of the pan well maybe i just recorded a video to tell people we were going on a hiatus i remember recording something in here where i had my good work show shirt on anywho where we are today is in the office <laughs> for now for now. So yeah, so we're excited to um, to have Tammy Miller on though from the bridge to talk about their organization. And she's a uh, organization serves the South Side. Whoop, whoop, shout out to the South Side. <laughs> you had no, just because you live in Sandy Springs doesn't mean we, you can't. Hey, really? You South have to, I mean, you're going to get the fuck my zip code and my address. Yes, Trenise lives at 147. <laughs> now, just get, I don't know what her address is. I mean, goodness gracious. I thought you had already talked about that on the show before, though. I'm know. pretty sure over the years you have said. I think we focus Sandy more Springs. on the fact that you live basically in the South and yeah. In the country. But, um, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah. I um, but I, we do. I spend enough time on the south side now that we opened, you know, Morrow store and Metropolitan Parkway. I've spent. By the my- way, if you have not been to either one to of go. those, you should definitely go. Those stores are um, are great, highly rated Goodwill stores. You can find a lot of fantastic stuff in both of them, and the managers are fantastic. They do a great job with those stores. They really so, do. Yeah, I do spend my fair. I mean, quite honestly, we spend our fair share everywhere because. That is true. There's a lot of places to go with 69 stores now and 14 career centers. There is no shortage of places to go to run up on. I was somewhere. I forget where I was going the other day, somewhere and passed by a Goodwill. And I'm like, well, what, which, what store is that? Like, so, <laughs> And you didn't know? No, probably because as we have discussed, you know, my geography is terrible. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when I'm going places, it was West Marietta because I remember you asked me about, it and I was like, "Oh, that's West Marietta." Oh, remember? No. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I, I feel like we had the conversation. I was like, "Oh, that's." We West might West. have, but yeah, I um, I when I'm going someplace, especially a place I'm unfamiliar with, like I'm, you know, I'm following directions, but I don't necessarily attach mm. where I where I am with where I am. Like that doesn't. Uh, connect so sometimes I do just kind of roll past the goodwill and I'm like I don't what what oh that's there so okay we'll we'll just go with that and then sometimes I remember I'm like oh I've been here before and then that helps Mm -hmm. but I can't say that I yeah mm -mm. 
So yeah, anyway, well, there's a lot of them now. So you nine times out of 10, if you're going somewhere, you're gonna roll past a Goodwill or a donation center. There's going to be That's a true. Goodwill sign somewhere. There'll be a beacon. <laughs> On a hill. Literally, there might be a beacon. Be a beacon there. Right. Yeah. But yeah, so um, so definitely make your way to a goodwill store. But if you if you can't and you know somebody, let's get back to the bridge because that's because so I I feel like we kind of we went we went past well, it, which is what this, typically happens at the beginning of the show anyway. If you've ever listened to this show in the last however many years, you know. Yes, it happens. But we are very excited to talk to Tammy from the bridge because it's a great organization and they're hitting on, you know, it, like so many nonprofits, you start out with one topic and then you start to realize, oh, there's this, but the root cause of the issue is this and this. Mm -hmm. So they didn't just identify the root causes. They've actually started creating solutions for some of those causes. So great organization. So let's hear what Tammy has to say. Well, hello everyone and welcome back. We are excited because we're joined by our guest today who is Tammy Miller, the executive director of The Bridge, which was formerly known as the Prevention Plus. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you know what? Let's get started by educating our audience. And I think you're probably going to need to educate Trenise and I as well a little bit about The Bridge. So tell us about what you do and your mission. Yeah, thank you so much. So our organization is really on focused on youth and families, uh, helping those families move towards um, more positive, thriving outcomes. For many years, we have worked with young people just focused on young people who struggle academically in traditional public school settings who need smaller environments to thrive. Um, exposing those young people not only to, to the achievement of a high school diploma, but also because they're life after the program, right? So how they go on, if they move on to college or some level of college or exposing them to high growth, high demand careers across the state of Georgia. Um, our immediate focus and long vision has always been around those young people. And then our program really um, met its match like many other youth programs across the country, nonprofit work. We, um, we were hit by the pandemic. We watched our young people struggle in that particular um, you know, during the pandemic with their family lives, many of them we found were living in um, motels and were having an issue with food security. So in order for us to be able to ensure that we can talk to young people who are already struggling academically, um, meet those challenges, we knew that we had to offer support to the families. So we then move forward to, you know, moving in high gear, like many other nonprofits, we started um, working with the entire family. And so our programs move from just education um, to serving youth and their families around food security and housing stability. So that's what we do every day. Great. And you have a couple of different programs that we can talk about um, kind of individually, because I think it'll be interesting to hear how you're meeting these different needs. So one of them you have is called the Academy. So can you tell right. us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's our longest standing program. And we serve young people 16 to 21 in the Academy who um, are struggling. They find themselves in this and, and we all know them, right? They're circling the system. They're off track to the 23 credits they need to graduate from high school. And um, without some additional support, um, they find themselves meandering and then becoming one of those students in those categories in traditional public school, whereby they call them over age and under accredited, right? And so these are young people that will age out unless there's an intervention to help them graduate from high school. We target that student. And one of two things can happen. We run a small SACS accredited high school program. And, and when I say accredited program, it is much like the traditional accreditation that public schools get through Cognia um, and, and, and SACS. So we run this, we have that same level of accreditation. We run a smaller program for students who need more in-house support. And then we work with students who are stuck in traditional public school. They can't get to us. They, you know, they need a, they, for whatever reason, they can't be in our setting full time. 
We run credit recovery options for those students, meaning um, if you need, if you're short of the 23 credits you need to graduate, or you're in the 10th grade and you're older than you should be in the 10th grade, we then work with your counselors to approve credits for you to take through us um, while you're still in school to earn the catch up, basically. So to recover credits that you might have lost before, you can do that still with us in our program. And we provide, you know, what we love to say, the beauty of our work is really working more on an individual one-on-one -on -one basis with the students. So whether you're able to be with us full time or if you're still in public school, that is our niche, really working with students one on one, helping that student achieve mastery in a particular subject area, surrounding that student with the additional supports they need so that they can look with great hope and anticipation towards a, a future that they have dreamed about or they've seen other students pursue and they felt like at the end of the day, they wouldn't have that same opportunity because they were struggling. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. And, mm -hmm. You know, and, and you mentioned at the top of the at the top of the interview that you know many of the youth that you found were, um, you know, they didn't have a home, and so they might have been living in a in a hotel. Uh, but mm -hmm. you have a program called Housing Pathways that that mm -hmm. helps with that. Can you break that down for us? Give us a sense of sort of what that program does and the overall experience of how that might integrate into the other programs that you have. Absolutely. So. Um, but it's interesting before the pandemic is that we were probably starting to get some feelers that there was going to be a, that this was happening more and more. Um, we had students who were working with us in our programs and um, they were reaching out to us saying, hey, we are not my mom needs some help or we are staying in a hotel until we can get on our feet and she needs some help with rent or we're, we're about to be put out. And we were helping families just as they came to us with those type of requests. Because let me tell you something, it is hard to talk to young people about a thriving future or follow me or let me show you something when mama is in pain, mm -hmm. right? Or when mama has an issue that is really heavy on her heart and it is, and it is uh, playing out in their day-to-day -day lives, right? So we can have young people that have been in um, an academic struggle. They're actually now you know, they're gaining momentum, they're doing much better. But when they have that interruption, the immediate thought is, I've got to go to work, I got to do something about it, right? So your ability to be able to influence them about making better decisions for the long term is really impeded. So we found that happening. Um, and we were, you know, already dealing with those things and the pandemic happened and then we had more of those requests come up. So we applied for a grant through the United Way, which we are very grateful for, that really opened up a new area of calling for us. And so we began to work with families of students that we knew very strategically who were in living in hotels, um, excuse me, motels, and they needed another option. They needed a helping hand to get out, right? And ladies, let me just tell you what we feel with that is that all of us can get caught up in a cycle that we sometimes need help getting out of. But imagine if you're paying week to week and you're sometimes paying upwards of twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a month to be there. And because you can't get out because you've had an eviction on your credit, you're circling a system as well that you don't know how to get out of. And you feel you don't feel empowered to be able to get out of that. So what we do is we are um, working with those families. So families that say, yes, we want to work with you. We work with those families over three to six months period to begin to talk to them about credit repair, um, how to deal with evictions, how to be a good tenant, financial literacy. Um, we help them at the end of that three, that six month period to start looking for longer term sustainable housing. We work with other housing partners to be able to create options for these families. Along the way, we're providing some financial incentive and stipends for them as they complete financial literacy components. Um, as they, you know, go through different workshops with us, sometimes we do employment and how to upgrade your career or look for careers rather, how to be, um, how to navigate yourself through employment opportunities and then climbing a ladder within your own work environment. All those type things we're, we're trying to expose the mother and the father to um, while giving them some financial incentives as well as at the end of that, helping them find more longer term sustainable housing. That's, that's incredible. And, you know, both of my parents were educators and they're, you know, they chose to work in 
schools that didn't have resources, mm -hmm. as, you know, other resources and students that needed that extra help. And one of the things that they always said, if kids, kids can't learn if they're hungry. So yes. that's another thing that you all are touching on. So talk to us a little bit about that part too. Yes, absolutely. Kids can um, learn if they're hungry. Seniors um, have to make choices between buying, doing their medications and buying food and even, you know, whether I can have bread this week, right? Mm -hmm. um, just because the cost and inflation is associated with everything. So if you, if we back it back to the young person and we think about families that are living in extended stays, well, ladies, um, when's the last time you've been able to cook a full meal in a in a motel, right? Or a hotel, right? And some of us have had more privilege, we've been able to stay in hotels, right? And go downstairs and eat, right? Um, but if you're living in a motel, when's the last time you've had a full-fledged cooked meal, right? Or, you know, you're probably more likely eating on the go. And there are lots of statistics that I don't have to tell you about that we all know when you're trying to talk about diets or eating healthy or clean eating, we all know about that, right? So we recognize that families don't have a real opportunity there, right? They're stuck. And so how do we help families make better choices? How do we introduce them to opportunities that can help create and lighten the load? So we started packing bags, right? With a full meal in the bag, as well as a gift card for them to be able to do some you know, shopping that they might have. And we started partnering with produce companies um, and agencies to be able to provide fresh produce because you and I know fresh food makes a difference. We also know that there's a challenge a little bit with um, a debate about if produce is even affordable in some communities, right? So what we wanted to do is be able to educate our families, provide fresh food at the same time and a meal in the bag. Um, for those families so that we can help alleviate some of the burden that they're and the choices that they're having to make while introducing them to better choices. That's how that started. Well, it also morphed, right? Because um, we host that here out of our college park office. And we found there were many people around us who still who had needs that were not even living in um, extended stays. They were seniors who were having to make choices on a weekly, monthly basis. Um, families will, you know, young families. And so we opened a pantry. Um, then we went from just the bag to open a pantry and giving folks um, client choice. They can come in and figure out what they want to have while also bringing in produce um, to continue to bring that education around why fresh food is life. So you are hitting like on all cylinders, the education, the housing, mm -hmm. um, you know, food. Um, so you know what? I, I think that we're we owe our audience to um, to now tell them sort of where they can find the services. And if they know of youth or families who could use your help, how do Absolutely. we get them connected to you? So tell us a little bit about that. And then I guess the service area too, which would be important for us to know so that as people are listening and they, they know of someone, they can make sure that they get them to the right place. Absolutely. So we're Clayton County, South Fulton focused. So if you're in the South Fulton area or Clayton County, we are here for you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, if you live in any hotel, motels along that area, give, give us a call at 770-961-5421. If you want help, uh, we have our pantry is open every Thursday from 10 to 2 p.m. You can come in and purchase items for yourself and we give a gift card for you to help offset anything else you might have to purchase. Um, and we are always, for students anywhere across Metro Atlanta, they can participate in our credit recovery program. And we're enrolling for that now. So if you know, if there are students out there that are struggling and you already know student or parent, if your student is gonna, is, if he's gonna graduate or if he's gonna pass that science, math or social studies class, you already know that. You've got some inkling of that. Reach out to us, we can help you. Um, and then of course, um, if you have any housing, food, or education needs, just give us a call. We can talk you through it at 770-961-5421. Or you can visit our website just to kind of familiarize yourself with us at www.thebridgeus.org. 
Fantastic. Well, Tammy, it's been a pleasure. We can tell that you have a passion for this work, uh, those folks that you're serving and just wanting to make a difference in, in seeing the impact on their lives. So thank you to you and your team for doing what you're doing. Uh, folks, if you have been listening and you know of a family or youth who could use the services of the bridge, please make sure you dial the number get them to the website, get them to Tammy and her team so that they yes. can they can help out. Uh, and um, just, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for all of the work that you're doing to pour into our community. Yeah, and let me just end with this. I love to leave, it, leave this with the people that I'm talking to. Everybody deserves the opportunity to thrive. Nice. Absolutely. Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you.